Today we are going to start our Native American bags. So to start this project we are going to use some thicker paper and I am going to fold it in half like a birthday card but I'm not going to match my corners up. I'm going to slide them down a little bit so that I have a little bit of a gap or an edge to that paper. So I'm going to crease it right here and what that allows is it allows for me to fold over this edge and kind of seal the top like an envelope. So at this point, we're going to need cardboard and a thumbtack. So these can be very pokey and dangerous, so please use them carefully and safely. What we're going to do is we're going to poke holes so our needle can go in. And if you look at this example, I have four on each side, and then at the bottom I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So four, ten, four, kind of a pattern. When we poke our holes, we're going to have a piece of cardboard underneath so that we don't poke into the table. I am not going to poke on that edge we folded over for the top. And I don't want my holes to be really close to the edge. I want to come in a little bit. So if I put my thumb right there, it's about as big as my thumbnail in. So I'm using my thumbnail to measure. It's not right on the edge. So I've got one. I'm going to space this out about a, oh, I'd say again, a thumb space, two, and I'm trying to keep these in a row, three, four. So I spaced out the four so that they take up that whole edge. And now I'm going to do ten across the bottom, keeping those same things in mind, not by the edge or the fold, but in a little bit, and spacing them out. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If you end up with eight or twelve, that's okay. That's still close. And again, I'm going to come in from this last edge. One, two, three, four. So what I've kind of done is I've outlined around the edge. So you might be doing this right away. If you're waiting for a piece of cardboard or a thumbtack to use, you can go to Mrs. Cleary's table and pick out your yarn color. So I am ready to put my needle onto the yarn. This is a super tricky thing to do, so I'm going to show you a couple helpful um, hints. The needle has a hole in it called the eye of the needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one end of my thread and I am going to gently rub back and forth with the eye of the needle, trying to get a little bit of that yarn in. I have a little bit in. Now I'm going to pull it with my other pincher fingers and get it in. So I kind of ripped my yarn a little bit, but that's not a big deal. This part will probably get cut off at the end. I am going to suggest that we tie this onto our needle. So I'm going to make a loop just like I would tie my shoes and I'm going to put that end into the loop and pull just like I'd start to tie my shoes. I'm not pulling tight and I'm not doing anything fancy that's just going to help my needle stay on my yarn as I start to sew. Alright, I am going to start in this first hole with my needle and that hole is not the biggest hole so I'm going to have to push a little bit with my needle to get it in. So I'm going down and I am pulling and I have to take my pincher fingers and keep pulling and pull and pull all the way through. Holy moly! Pulling. Look at me pulling, 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 pulling. I think I was pulling the wrong way for a little bit. So I pulled all the way till I have a little tail. At this point, as we start, we need to tie this together. So just like I tie my shoes, crisscross, pull it through the loop, and I'm going to pull like I'm tying my shoes to make a knot. Instead of doing the bows, we're going to double knot this onto our paper. So that just means I'm going to do another knot. So I'm going to crisscross them, I'm going to pull them through the loop, and I'm going to knot tight. And there I have a double knot. I will help you if you need it, but 
I think most of you are going to be able to do a double knot just fine. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm taking my needle and I'm always going to go down the hole where I, pu where I push that thumbtack through. My needle goes down. I pull my needle on the other side all the way through. This is where some kids get goofed up because I'm pulling, pulling, pulling that yarn and there's a lot of it. And I got a little knot in there. Oh, that would be my luck. If you get a little knot or need help with anything, I can help you with it. Let's see if I can make this work. My goodness. All right. I'm going to have that knot in there for the rest of my sewing. If you have something like this, I will help you fix it, but I'm just going to go with it. So I went down. I'm going to keep up that pattern. My needle goes down where I poked my hole and I pull my needle through and I pull and I pull and I pull until I can't pull any more yarn through. There's where my knot is. You can see where it's starting to get a diagonal line. My needle goes down. When I pull through this back side, I want to pull away from this other yarn. I don't want it to get looped together. There it is. I have those four holes done. I'm just going to go to the bottom, poking down. When I pull, some kids somehow pull their needle between the yarn. I want to pull it away from the yarn. So over here, pulling away from that extra loop. And I'm going to keep going down, pulling through. So I'm going to continue and I'll, when I come back, I will be at this last hole. All right, I have stitched all the way around the bag, and now I am on this last end where I just stopped. What we're going to do is we are going to go back around, and that will give us that crisscross zigzag X look. So I just went down this last hole, so my yarn is still at the back. I am going to go around the edge so my needle goes back down. So again, I'm still always going down, and I'm pulling, pulling, pulling all that yarn through, and then I get the zigzag look. If you flip it over, you might even see the X. This one just happens to be right on the edge. So now I'm working my way all the way back out round, pulling that yarn through. My needle always goes down, and I pull, pull, pull. When I get to the corner, Nothing changes. I'm going down, pulling, pulling, pulling. There's my X. So I'm going to continue, and when I come back, I'll be ready to knot and tie my stitch off. All right, second graders, I have finished my way all the way back around my bag, and I have two ends. To finish, I am just going to double knot. So just how we started, my yarn is going to crisscross, and I'm going to bring that little tail through the circle and pull. And I'm going to do that again, crisscross, tail goes through the hole, and I pull. Now I'm going to trim my extra yarn off. If you have a long amount of yarn left, you can bring it up to Mrs. Cleary's table in a pile. We'll save these long pieces. And we'll also need to put our needles in a pile. All right, we are on to the printing part of this project. So you have some sheets at your table with some Native American symbols to kind of help you for some inspiration. And you have your foam plate. So this is what we're going to scratch our picture into. The thing is, we have to scratch it in, so that means we can't erase, because it'll be pushed in. So Native Americans used a lot of shapes in their designs. Oh, I like how this one looks. Pretty easy rhombus shape. So I'm drawing really lightly, just to start. So I have this rhombus shape. Now with my pencil, I'm going to push hard. I want to be able to actually feel that bump that I've drawn it in and scratched it so hard you can feel it. So this picture that they used has another rhombus on the inside. So again, I would start out light. 
and then go over again to push really deep. You do not have to copy the designs that are on these sheets. You can make them your own. So maybe I'll put some zigzags in here. The one thing you want to keep in mind is Native Americans did not have the alphabet that we have. So you wouldn't see any words and you wouldn't see pictures of your favorite cartoons. They didn't have TV. They used a lot of simple shapes and lines. So there's a symbol over here that's an arrow. So I'm going to continue filling this design up with different images that I have here or making up my own shapes and right, lines. I have scratched my design and if you look at it from the side you can actually see how it actually goes in. You can even see a little bit of the picture on the back of my phone. Some of my lines are really thick, some of them are skinny. So try to get a couple of different kinds of lines in your project. Now we're ready for the printing part. So messy mat. We are printing these on orange paper. So orange marker or even yellow marker is not going to be the best choice to get this to show up. So I encourage you to try at least two colors. If you want more than two colors, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go with blue. So when I use the markers, you can actually see that it's not sticking the greatest. It's kind of just sitting on top of this plate. It's not soaking up at all. That's good. That's what we want. I'm coloring the whole background with this blue color. I'm on the messy mat so I don't make a mess on my table. And I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to do red in the middle where I did the zigzag pattern. And in the very center I'm going to try brown. Notice how I'm holding this really carefully with just one pointer finger. I'm not using my whole hand or I'm going to have a very messy hand and the marker is going to come off. Okay, the printing part. You are going to print on the front and the back. But each time you print, you have to do a new color or you have to recolor it. To print, we're going to use a little bit of a wet rag and we're going to get our orange paper wet where we want it to go. You can kind of see that it's a little bit darker on the orange paper if I hold this up. Um, it's hard to see it on the video, but this does look wet. My printed plate is going to go down onto that wet area, and I am not moving this foam anywhere. I'm just pushing and rubbing all over. And when I pull it up, I can take a little peek. Awesome, I can see the markers on there. I'm going to pull up, and there's my design. There's some lighter areas, that's okay. But now I am ready to print again. You can do the same colors, or you can change the colors. So if you want to change the colors, you might want to wash this off at the sink. If you're going to do the same colors, you can just color right on top again. You're going to wet the back and stamp it, and you will have two prints on your awesome Native American bags. Pretty cool. When you're finished, they can go on the drying rack. You could even put this plate inside your bag so that you know where it is, and you will be able to take that home and print at home doing the same thing.